Uh, my name is uh, Batelemi Mwanza, originally from uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, currently uh, living in uh, the United States of America uh, in uh, Ohio. And today I'm uh, here in uh, Geneva to attend uh, the UNHCR uh, consultations on uh, resettlement and uh, complementary pathways. Uh, we are refugees, uh, so we really need to be part of the decision-making process. So that's why we are on the table to make sure that we participate from the beginning of the decision-making process till the end. Uh, originally from Bhutan. At the, at the moment I live in the Netherlands. Today I'm here to attend uh, 2024 consultation on uh, our resettlement and complementary pathways. And I'm in Geneva. Uh, welcome on Word Out Community Channel. I uh, show that uh, provides information to refugees, immigrants, or displaced people in the world. Uh, as you all know, our work is to ensure that we provide ideas that can help refugees get protection around the world. Today, um, I have very amazing individuals who are coming from background of refugees themselves. And they have very good expertise and they are doing a lot of work to support the system that has been put in place for refugees and immigrants in the world. Being in, in Geneva, actually we are at the conference called Sierra CP, a consultation on, on resettlement and complementary pathways. We are trying to find solutions that can expand uh, different pathways to protect refugees in the world. So the guests that I have on the show today, they are very amazing and uh, um, tell us about who you are and uh, what you do. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Um, first of all, uh, hi everyone. My name is uh, Batelemi Mwanza, uh, originally from uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo and uh, currently living uh, in the U.S. Uh, as uh, you said, I've been a refugee for 11 years and I was uh, in Zimbabwe. Yep. So uh, what I do, I'm uh, the uh, Refugee Youth Led Organization Coordinator of uh, the Global Refugee Youth Network. So uh, the Global Refugee Youth Network is um, just a refugee led organization which supports refugee led organizations that are located uh, in rural areas, uh, in refugee camps, in uh, towns and uh, you know in um, many regions like uh, Africa, MENA region, Latin America, and uh, Pacific Asia. So we support these uh, refugee-led organizations with uh, funding, we support them with uh, capacity building, and we also open uh, doors for uh, opportunities. And of course, I'm uh, part also of um, different boards, for example, uh, this uh, refugee advisory group uh, to the consultations uh, uh, on uh, resettlement and uh, complementary pathways, and I'm um, also part of uh, the UNHCR advisory board of um, organization led uh, by uh, uh, displaced and uh, stateless people. So if I think I can uh, focus on my presentation, we may take a day. So wow. I think I would uh, like to stop here and maybe we can move Man, to you, you have Man, you have, you have very high profile. I don't <laughs> think my profile can be very happy with you. <laughs> you know? yeah, you're doing a great job, and thank you for doing that. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, thank you so much, sir. Yeah. And, uh, well, I wouldn't want to say much because, uh, well, <laughs> I'll just say a bit about myself. Well, my name is Bati Mnyachi. I'm also originally from, like you said, the Democratic Republic of Congo. And, uh, well, I've also lived experience of being a refugee in Zimbabwe for over a period of 19 years. Wow. So it was almost like 19 years year. in the camp. 19 years. So, yeah. um, well, while I was in Zimbabwe, I did my studies. You know, it, it wasn't easy, but I tried my best and I completed my uh, undergraduate degree. And while I was in Zimbabwe, you know, I realized and I, I scanned the environment, the refugee environment. I realized many challenges that actually refugees were facing and especially the young girls due to these early child marriages and challenges like that. So after seeing those challenges, I, was, I founded an organization called Change Agents Advocacy in 2018. 
this organization is committed to promoting and protecting the rights of vulnerable and marginalized refugee girls through campaigns, uh, advocacy campaigns, mentorship programs, and income generating activities, you know, to empower them, socioeconomic empowerment, so that they can actually be a, more of a value to their families than just value of, um, you know, a, a, a once off paycheck, like yep. giving them away for some money. Is this so, organization focuses on people in the camps or outside the camps? It's focusing on uh, uh, refugee girls. Okay. In the girls camps. in the camps. Yes. Okay. So it's actually meant to empower the young girls through this. Uh, what is young girls when you say like? Can you break for us age? Well, age, the age, age begins from uh, the fourteen years, mm -hmm. going up to thirty-five years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's because I'm looking at the U.S. standard when we we talk about youth. I think youth in in in, in United States, they, like I think they end eighteen years, right? But for us in Africa, we go up to forty. Yeah, that yeah, is, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. still youth. Mm, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But you are based in where? I'm currently based in Italy, where I'm doing my master's degree in global management and politics. Yeah. That is a program that I actually go through complementary pathways. Okay. The UNICO program, University Corridor for Refugees. Is the program that you came through, you used, yes. you used to come through? Yes, in Italy. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's called what? Uh, UNICO, University Corridor for Refugees. University Corridor for Refugees. For refugees. Yeah. Those are the opportunities. Yeah, that's that, the... That's how did you get that into that program? So, basically, uh, while I was in Zimbabwe, you know, like... Uh, information sharing is actually very crucial. Okay. Because I was also in the period where I was trying to find an opportunity for me to further my studies because I had completed and I wanted, I desired to further my studies in, uh, in abroad. Mm. So I, I, I tried various universities in Ireland, in Germany, in Poland. I, I got admission in those countries, but I couldn't get a scholarship. <laughs> okay. I tried my best to get a scholarship. Yeah. But while I was still navigating and navigating, actually this man, mm -hmm. he's the man who sent me the link. He's the one yeah. who shared with you the he information. He shared the link with me. And I totally forgot. Yeah. yeah. Already? Yes. He, wow. He's, he just informed me. Yeah. That. Wow. He's the man who shared the link with me. And when he shared the link with me, I told him, now I'm going to Italy. Oh. <laughs> that same day, I did not sleep. I applied I, because I had all the necessary documents that are required. I applied and uh, after some time I got responses from the universities and we kept on corresponding until I was awarded the scholarship. Beautiful. So what are you pursuing? Like, what are you, what, what, what are you? I'm pursuing, uh, my, the program is called uh, Global Management. It's a Master of Science in Global Management and Politics. Mm -hmm. And my, well, my desire in the future to become a humanitarian diplomat. Wow. You know, where I am actually, you know, representing and actually concretely, you know, advocating and raising the voice of the voiceless. Those people whose voices have been silenced, that's something that I really need. I feel it's my passion and my desire and even my purpose. That's the reason also why I'm here because I'm a member of I'm also a member of the refugee advisory group uh -huh. where we are consulting on issues to do with uh, complementary pathway and resettlement. Uh -huh. So we came here to Geneva uh -huh. to come and discuss on these issues to also give them suggestions on what needs to be done so that better pathways are created and we can upscale the programs. So. Your voice is already working. Yeah. You are already doing good work. I've I've, I've listened to your speech, yeah. and you you had a I think a, a presentation. Yes, yes. I, yes. I will share with the people out there. It was really great because you, so you were talking about uh, travel documentations. Exactly. Yes, the that was and and, and uh, sponsorship program, right? Yeah, we we're also talking about uh, upscaling how to upscale the, uh, the complementary pathways. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. Coming to you, so how did you, uh, where do you live right now? Okay, so right now, I'm um, not sure if I said it again, I'm living in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, uh, exactly in Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's where I am now. That's my home. 
what was your uh, pathway to come to US? I used uh, the resettlement okay. um, US way. Yes, uh, like uh, you know, when you are in the camp, first of all, um, uh, you have to go through uh, the interview of the government. So once you get a uh, refugee status, uh, so you will be there at least. Uh, you know, if you are allowed maybe to study. Sometimes you can do maybe uh, a few business like in the camp. Yeah, though I know to work, sometimes it's a bit uh, difficult. Yeah, so uh, there are also, at least as you know, with UNHCR, there are durable solutions. There's uh, um, maybe a, a resettlement, uh, reintegration, or maybe and, uh, if you want to go back to your country, yeah, repatriation. voluntary repatriation, then you can uh, go here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was at least lucky also to be uh, selected uh, amongst the people who were supposed to come to the U.S., so... Yeah, right now, that's why I am. We appreciate America for giving you that opportunity. We appreciate <laughs> Italy for doing that good job. Yeah, All sure. right, thank you. So, guys, tell me more. How do you end the app doing what you're doing? Okay, so for me, um, when I was young, my passion was to become uh, an international journalist. Oh. Yes, so I really wanted to be an international journalist. And uh, what I was doing, like... Uh, you know, sometimes when I, I think I was around like uh, five to six years, mm. like I was asking myself, like, you know, when I see people doing uh, some uh, programs on TV, I was like, these people, like, how do they appear in our house? You know, I was trying to find out. I was thinking maybe they get in uh, and a certain <laughs> hall and then they appear directly. So with time, then I was like, I wanted now to support talented youth. Mm. Yeah, like doing journalism, but for me to support this uh, and maybe expose them so that they are known, they can be, uh, like, you know, known worldwide. Yeah, so then uh, when I arrived now in Zimbabwe, I thought, you know, and I could see that sometimes it could be a bit difficult for me to continue in my career. So I had to uh, join a college where I um, did, like, I think around uh, one year and a half or two years of uh, uh, studies. Yeah, and uh, I got even my advanced diploma. In what? Yeah. Yes, yeah. In journalism and media studies. Okay. Yes, journalism and media studies. So I got even my advanced diploma. And from there, that's when now I um, I started doing also some activities in uh, the camp. So doing the activities, like for example, like, you know, when I arrived, uh, you know the condition of the camp. So sometimes when you're in the camp, you'll be even thinking that we're supposed even like, if the country could be better, you could even uh, remain there, yeah, because yeah. you were doing a lot of things. Yeah, but now, yeah. yes. So then, when Tantai could be there thinking, then I said, okay, instead of thinking, why shouldn't I look forward? So that's when I said, okay, here there are some refugee youths who are like me who want to go far. So why don't I have to help them? So that's why I started at least, I went even to the office of UNHCR. I told them, no, guys, I am interested, like, of creating a youth group. So then they say, no, don't worry, there's already the youth group which is here. Mm. Yeah, and that's how I had to join uh, that uh, group. Mm. And joining that group, I had to be selected again to join another group. Like, I started my journey, you know, since uh, 2014. Yeah, and from 2014, 2015, they had to create another group like uh, on mental health, just trying to help people on how to adjust, you know, uh, their life when they arrive in Zimbabwe. So from there then, I became a leader leading uh, more than 5,000 um, young refugees in the camp. Yeah. And from there, in 2017... That's the camp in Zimbabwe, right? In Zimbabwe, yes. Zimbabwe. Mm. And in 2017, that's how now I got selected to be part of uh, the UNHCR Global Youth Advisory Council. Yep, so there were around, uh, we were around, I think, uh, 12 people representing like all refugees worldwide. Mm. Yeah, to just advocate, you know, for the development and the protection of refugees. And that's how now I started my uh, journey at the global level. Yeah. So from uh, 2017, when I started coming to the um, um, High Commissioner's Dialogue, yeah, here, and yeah, that's how I had now to participate in the NGO consultations and coming here for so many programs. And even like in 2019, I had to come as well in the U.S. for the um, a UN uh, Climate Summit. Yeah, it was for youth, so I was also at least graced to be part of uh, that. Yep, so that's at least... That's uh, right, man. That is. You're doing really good. And uh, thank you for having that spirit. You know, yeah, we, we have very many youth. We have very many young people who are you know, looking at 
you yes sir. and um, where you are mm. they want to get where you are yes sir. some of them they are seeing you mm. right now but they don't know the effort that you have put behind yes, the, your effort so what like back to you in 60 seconds what motivated you to do what you're doing right now okay basically uh well while i was also in zimbabwe you know as a refugee seeing the challenges that refugees were facing and uh, me being part of the challenges as well and uh, you know it struck me really hard and i was like no why why do these challenges keep coming in why isn't there someone to actually raise these issues because you know i felt like we didn't have people who could represent refugees and I told myself, you know what? I'm going to represent refugees. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to do all my best to speak out. And when I, I, I'm going to raise the voice of refugees on the global level. So that's how my journey actually began. Wow. So from there, I then, like I said, I scanned the environment. I started NGO. And, uh, you know, I started also collaborating with UNHCR various activities. They even trained me in public speaking, advocacy, and, uh, and uh, uh, leadership. Yeah. So while we're doing all those things, they started also inviting me to these uh, international conferences. Then, you know, I, I started you know, raising the voice of refugees on these forums. And uh, I thank God that actually some of the things that we've been saying in these forums, yeah, we are seeing a progressive, you know, implementation of some of the things. So, and that is really, really crucial because, you know, humanity is 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 more important, it's more important than everything else. And everything. So, we hope we have to preserve our, the values of compassion, you know, of inclusivity. Because all this, this is what defines oh, our yeah. shared yeah. You know, humanity. I'm so great, guys, that you're doing this. You decided to choose this pathway, uh, and I'm part of you too. Right? Yeah, sure. We were here last year, yeah. and I think we have similar goals. We have similar um, ideas of what we want to achieve for our people. I think women, uh, young girls, are going through a lot, and you're doing what is needed to be done. Yeah. Thank you for doing it. I really appreciate it. As we summarize this show, I really want to to hear from both of you. Um, if someone really, if any other refugee are interested in getting into this work, what advice can you give them? Okay. So uh, if um, to start, I know this is really a great question. Yeah, so, you know, for example, when you are seeing someone uh, appearing uh, in this uh, global forum, uh, do not think that the person uh, just woke up, you know, from a bed and then became maybe a global advocate. So that means there is some work that he did behind. behind. So uh, what I would advise you, be you. Be you, do not... Try to imitate someone. For example, if you are talented in sports, you are talented maybe to do uh, activities on climate change, education, or maybe business or entrepreneurship, just continue. It's just that way which will bring you uh, on a certain level. Is there? He used the education, and I'm here. I use my passion of working with refugees. In the camp, I was doing uh, campaigns, you know, awareness campaigns. Running, you know, around the camp, there was sun. And there are even some people were like, this guy, like, what is he doing? Um, I was volunteering. I yeah. was not receiving anything. any money, anything. Me too. You know? But I was just there. That was my passion. And I knew what I was doing. So that's why I think it would be good. Dream. And then make a step. For example, if you think maybe there's a certain solution that you can do in, the, in your community, do it. With our Global Refugee Network, we support those refugee organizations which are in the grassroots uh, level. If you are the, like they're doing, we support them with seed funding, and from there, that's where they can grow. So that's why I can say, dream and do something. So, yeah. Thank you. That is very good advice. What, what, what advice would you tell? 
Yeah, well, I wouldn't go very far from what he has said because uh, that's the fundamental foundation of everything, of life. Basically, knowing your purpose is very important. It's really, really important, yeah. Because um, if you do not know your purpose, you will not know what to do. You will just see someone doing something and then you want to do that. See someone else doing something. So you'll be like the wind. You don't have a direction. So the most important thing is knowing your purpose. And also knowing your purpose is not easy. It comes with really, really analyzing, observing yourself, and knowing really, like, some of those things that really excite you when you're doing it. Some of those things that you can do and you don't even see trick of time. Those are the things that actually, you know, move you. So for you to really know that this is my purpose, it has to be fun. You know, yeah. it, you, you have to enjoy doing it. I have to like it. Yeah. It has to add value. It has to be valuable to people. Just to transform people, impact people. Yeah. So, with basically, I would just say, know your purpose. Thank you very much, yeah. guys. It's so important. And the same, I would add on what you have just added. Okay. Like people should be who they are. Mm -hmm. They should just focus on what they are good at. Mm -hmm. yeah. And personally, I want to advise people to be very patient. The system is a little complicated. Yeah, I just want to add something on purpose. Also, yeah. have a vision. Yeah. Because without vision, even the Bible say, people without vision, people <laughs> perish. <laughs> they are perish. Yeah. So, vision is very important. If you stick on your vision, you have a, you have a, you have the goals. You you set the goals. You be able to achieve them. So, uh, guys, yeah. thank you very much. Do you right. have anything to say? Thank you. No, I think uh, yeah, everything has been uh, said. Uh, maybe I think we've uh, because I know even stakeholders may be uh, watching us. Yeah. I think uh, with you, I, it will be really good. We are young people. We really want to work with you. We really want to collaborate with you. Yeah. So what I need from you is just to uh, open space, right. hire refugees. Give them uh, places for attachment, for internship. I think that will definitely be fine. And make us part of the solution. We are the solution. Be with us from the beginning of the decision-making process till the end. Thank you. That is good, man. You said it well. So we need a meaningful participation of refugees in everything. We are not ordering. We are requesting kindly. If you feel like we can be of support, you, we just want to be alliance. Thank you very much for watching.